I'm Ashley and in my video today I'm going to be doing a review of Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale. This will eventually contain spoilers in this video so I'll let you know when the spoilery section starts. But I'm going to start off with a non-spoiler section and then move into the spoilers. I read this about a week and a half ago on a train when my husband and I were taking a vacation and I read it over the course of basically a day and a half on the train and I ended up giving it a three and a half out of five stars and I'm gonna go ahead and put this down because it would be ridiculous for me to hold this up during the whole video. So like I said, I ended up giving this book three and a half out of five stars and I did enjoy it. I initially wanted to give it five stars when I first finished it and then I kind of had a while to sit with it and then my book club also met yesterday for this book since this was our read for this month and after like further reflection and discussion with the other girls in book club, I've kind of decided that I don't think I want to give it a full five stars actually. When I first finished it, I was very much in awe of it and was just so impacted by it and its message and motif and I just like I, I felt like it hit me you know it really kind of felt like it physically hit me and so just because I was so impacted by it I was like oh my god this was crazy like I'm gonna give it five stars because holy crap but now that I've kind of like I said reflected on it I'm pulling its rating down to a three and a half for reasons. <laughs> Firstly, because of the way it ended. I was just not a fan of the way it ended and I'll go into more detail about that in the spoilery section. But I also ended up giving it a lower rating because of its writing style. It's written in a style that makes Offred sort of break the fourth wall and she continuously talks to us and interjects her own thoughts. She sometimes, like I said, breaks the fourth wall and says things like, that didn't happen, I just made that up when describing an event that took place or context is everything or I know you don't believe me so it feels as though she's talking to us and letting us know how unreliable she was which worked in that I did feel sympathetic for her but also it was just a little bit off-putting and it just made me feel like even though I was sympathetic and connected with her. I also just didn't quite believe that she was speaking to me. It on the one hand broke the illusion for me because it, it jarred me. You know, we go from describing events and describing situations and the way that the society is, you know, built and then we jump into her saying she feels a particular way about something or her saying that she's unreliable. And so that was just a bit jarring for me and it broke the spell for me. But like I said, on the other hand, it did also make me more sympathetic towards her because it made me sort of feel like she was more fleshed out, more fleshy, and just more real honestly because it was words that were actually coming from her that were seemingly directed to me. So the writing style, while unique and interesting and sometimes sympathetic, did throw me off sometimes. The other reason I lowered this is just because it took me so long to get through. And part of the reason it took me a long time to get through because it is very dense material. So that's, I mean, probably the biggest reason it took me so long to get through. But also it just wasn't action-packed enough. It wasn't quite gripping enough for me to feel like I wanted to continue to read it and not put it down. It was not unput downable. I definitely <laughs> struggled through this in the day and a half I read it. And it's not a very long book. It's pretty short actually. So the fact that it took me a while I think means something. And you could make an argument that it's because it was so emotionally packed and so I had to kind of take a step back from it and take a breather. But for me it felt like it was also just because it didn't do a lot. Like not a lot happened. I really just kept waiting for the other shoe to drop and it just didn't drop. So that was another issue for me that really made me feel like I wanted to lower the rating. And when I say I felt like the other shoe was about to drop, I just felt like there was a climax happening. Like when is it going to start? When is the thing going to happen? You know, the big something. And the big something never quite happens. And so that was a bit disappointing to me. I do realize that this is, as one other reviewer on Goodreads put it, the story of the beginning of a dystopian society or the beginning perhaps of a rebellion. Most dystopian fiction we read such as you know Divergent, Hunger Games, things like that all take place when the dystopian society is well established and has been happening for generations and so the way that it runs like I said well established there are traditions in place and things like that and a rebellion has started because they're tired of the way the society has ran. 
This, on the other hand, is a story of somebody who remembers what life was like before the dystopian society actually happened, before this new government took place. So because it's that story and she remembers what it was like before, that means it's the beginning of this society. So we're just, you know, that big climactic thing that happens that breaks everything, that breaks the society and has that rebellion happen, just doesn't happen in this. So if that's what you were looking for in this, I would stay away from it, honestly, because that doesn't happen. But if you want something that is really thought-provoking, deep, dark, and interesting and sometimes devastating, I would recommend this. I think this is a very important book. Like I said, I think that its message is absolutely golden. I just didn't like the vagueness of it. I will say it did feel like every word was very carefully chosen and hit me very, very hard. The writing is very, very professional, very well done. It evokes a lot of emotion. That was really top notch and garnered, like I said, a lot of emotion out of me. So that was really fantastic in that aspect, the aspect of the professionalism of every single sentence and every single word. Now I'm going to go into some aspects that may have a bit of spoilers in them, so if you don't want to see any spoilers for this, then I would go ahead and stop the video now. The show is coming out on Wednesday, I believe, so if you're interested in doing that instead, maybe go watch the show when it comes out or read the book and come back and watch the rest of this video. So like I said, I didn't like the vagueness of the book. It did feel like I was supposed to have a lot of sympathy for our main character, Offred, and I did have some sympathy for her, but not as much as I think was intended. And I think the reason I didn't have all the sympathy I could have had for her is because of the vagueness. Because we don't get the particulars or the details of her past and present, I don't know enough quite about her and I'm not as invested in her since I don't know her character, I don't know her history. And I just wish we knew what had happened to her specifically, how she sort of got to where she was. I know that she said that, you know, the way the society started happening was that her bank account was cut off and she had to only use her husband's money. She lost her job, things like that, but I don't understand how she was taken. I don't understand how her daughter was separated from her. I don't understand how the religious sect that ends up being in charge of everything took over. It just said that there was a basically like a mass shooting, I guess, of the president and the Senate and the Congress, but like which religion was it, you know? I don't understand how she was taken to the specific facility she ended up being in. I don't know what her previous life was like in her previous commander's um, house, so I just wish I had a little bit more details about how she got to where she was. Like I said, I know about, you know, what happened with her daughter and her husband. We even know a little bit about her upbringing with her mother and her best friend Moira, but I just wish I had more details just so that the impact of what's happening to her can fully hit me. I was really impacted by what was happening with her, don't get me wrong, the fact that she's boiled down to basically be a, a baby making machine while not being recognized for the fact that what she can do is so freaking valuable, it's it, mind-boggling and it does, like I said, make me really angry and emotional. I just think that if I knew more about her it would have maybe pushed it to the next level. And the whole setting was really eerie, the whole thing about the traditions that happened, it was really ritualistic, you know, whenever a baby is born all the handmaids get together and basically form a circle around her and also the actual wife of the commander like sits behind the handmaid while she delivers. That was really weird and eerie. It was also really unfortunate that this is a male driven society where they absolutely need women. You know, infertility is at an abnormally high rate and so they really need fertile women. They are very valuable, but despite the fact that they're super, super needed and everything like that, they're still subjected. They are still putting women in these just like really horrible positions, either sludging slop or being servants or not being able to read or carry cash or see the world around them. You know, they wear these bonnets that cover the outside world and they just have no freedom. And I don't understand why that is given that they're doing something that is really super, super necessary, like for all of humanity. It's like, if you really feel that they're that important, why don't you like treasure them more and treat them better? So that was really, eerie to me and really made me very angry as a woman myself. I just 
was really frustrated with that. My absolute favorite aspect of this book is that it is completely female point of view when this world is a completely male dominated society. I found that to be absolutely wonderful. I just feel like there should be more books like this that are basically just from entirely a female's point of view in a male-driven society. I think that's absolutely top-notch and wonderful because it really says something about the fact that like even though it's male-driven the female's perspective is what's most important and we don't really give a damn how the men feel because they suck and I think that is perfect, that is flawless kudos to that. I will say that I think I'm looking forward to the television show more actually than the book just because it seems like the television show is going to have a lot more action, going to be more action-packed, fast-paced, and I think that's just going to resonate and hit me more and I think that's going to be really interesting. I think that they've cast it super flawlessly so as long as they pretty much stick to the material and just really pump it up basically and make it more action-packed and riveting. I think that it's going to be phenomenal and probably better than the book. I can't really remember a time when I've ever said that I'm looking forward to a TV show or a movie more than a book that I've read. That's like never happened so that in itself says something. <laughs> My favorite character from this book was Moira who is Offred's best friend and I really like the interesting sort of comparison of where she ends up in her life versus where Offred ends up in her life. She works as a hooker and she has a lot of freedoms honestly. She you know has to do her job at night and stuff but once she does her job she's good. You know she has the rest of the day to sleep and eat whatever she wants and basically be with all the other women. She's a lesbian so she can be with the other women who are also hookers and she can smoke cigarettes, she can still drink, she can do all these other things so she's actually got a lot of freedoms. You know they'll still, if she gets out of shape or doesn't perform or something like that, then she'll be sent off to sludge the chemical sludge. She's got a lot of freedom versus Offred who is in what's supposed to be a sort of higher ranking higher class position as a handmaid doesn't get to read, she can't even take baths on her own, she doesn't have anything in her room that's her own, she can't have lotion or oil, she gets nothing, it's really bare bones, she has to walk with a partner, she can't walk by herself, she can't look at the outside world, she has to wear the same dress or garment or cloak, whatever you want to call it, every single day, so even though she's supposed to be have treated better, she's actually not, so I just think it's interesting where they both ended up in their lives, but it makes sense because Moira is always like a really free-spirited person so I think she's in the most applicable situation for her character. It makes sense and it's just interesting that Offred ended up being, you know, really, really restricted and Moira didn't. Like I said, the biggest thing I didn't like about this book was the ending. I don't understand what happened with Offred and Nick. I was really expecting that to be way more dramatic than it was. Also the fact that they had like kissed earlier out of nowhere. They're just like in this room together and then just can't control themselves and so they just like run towards each other even though they don't really know each other. It just seemed really unbelievable to me and then they end up being together but I don't know it just didn't really feel believable to me and it wasn't like given as much time as it should have been you know. All the things that happened with Nick happened in like the last maybe 27-ish pages of the whole book and it's like the most action-packed part of the book but it's not given enough time. So that was really frustrating and a really weird choice of plot pacing for me and I was really worried about it because Offred starts to really feel for Nick after she's with him which seems wrong considering she was married before with a kid so what the hell is she doing? But basically after she says she loves him I was just expecting something really awful to happen like I said waiting for the other shoe to drop and that didn't quite happen so that was probably like I said the most disappointing aspect of it. So my other favorite aspect of it was the setup of the society with the handmaids, the Marthas, the wives, the commanders and the way they wore their colors. I thought that was a really great way to set up this dystopian society so that's probably one of my other favorite things about this book. And those are my thoughts and opinions on The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. If you read this please feel free to comment below and let me know what you thought of it and if you like this video be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks so much for watching you guys and as the book says don't let the bastards get you down. 